My home is filled with a ton of Google Nest gear and actually Google products in general. And while it is a lot of fun to do those early quick reviews, it's a lot more important for the average person to understand the long-term performance, how these things are going to behave over the long run and what they like and what they don't like. So today I'm going to walk you through all of those components in a rapid fire way with Google Nest. There is one question that I continue to get almost on a daily basis here on the channel and that is really because Google has done a great job at creating two great products. And that first product is the best smart display as far as I'm concerned on the planet. Still to this day, even after Amazon has put out their new Echo Show 10, I think the Google Nest Hub Max is the is still the best one out there. It has a full HD screen, a full Nest camera on board, and a great speaker system that goes along with it. Plus, its interface is the best on the planet in terms of these smart displays. And really, Google has done a great job at bringing little features here and there that change our life and change how I use this. It is the fastest processing Google Home device that I have in my home, and everyone here agrees. It hears the best, it responds the best, it's the best interface. They just want this device everywhere instead of the other ones as soon as they've had this. I use the speakers on the Google Nest Hub Max the most in my home. So if anything's ever gonna wear out, it's this set of speakers. Now, I don't expect that anytime soon, but that's how I start music. And then that's how I manage it too. With a smart display, I'm able to actually pick and on the fly add and subtract speakers from my whole home audio system. That's really powerful and the smart display makes that easy. So when I get that question of should I go and get a Nest Hub or a Nest Hub Max, my answer every time is go get the Nest Hub Max. This is the one you're going to want. And I will tell you to go and spend, you know what, here in Canada, it's $300. And I would tell you to spend that instead of getting a couple of the first generation Nest, hub, Nest Hubs. Now, I have to tell you, the second Nest Hub has a couple of use cases that we're going to love, but in general, this device is just unreal. Now, I'm always frustrated a little bit about a few things, and the things I'm frustrated about are more about the Google whole ecosystem than it is this specific device. And, you know, one of the biggest ones is I don't have automations and I can't use the thread border router that is sitting in this device and has been idle since I brought it into my home. I want access to that and I'm frustrated that Apple already has thread products despite Google being the ones who own thread. I just don't get it. I don't know why we're waiting so long and I want that to change. The other issues that I have are more around Apple products and there's still not a great way to bring in an Apple calendar without kind of bringing it over to Google or, or duplicating all of your appointments and reminders are the same thing. It's just these integrations with these different services and apps that Apple has created. They just don't integrate well with this and we need that wall to break down. Now, I don't care that much about that anymore because I have a Pixel 4 XL and I have found this a really rugged and a solid phone since I have got this into my home. My favorite feature right off the bat is the Active Edge, which allows me to squeeze and then get the Google Assistant to come up. It has me walking around my home or walking around outdoors looking like a crazy person a little bit and talking to my phone, telling it what I want to have happen. It's not requiring me to use that wake word, so I really love that component of this. The iPhone 12 comes out here very recently, and it's a massive, heavy, and it's just a beast of a phone. And the fact is, the Pixel 4 XL, this is the larger size, it is so light in comparison. And I love that fact, when it's in my pocket, I'm not feeling this really heavy brick. And even when I go back to my older iPhone and use it for a bit, I'm just blown away with how much heavier that feels than the Pixel 4. The worst thing about the Pixel 4 is its battery life. And I pretty 
much got to keep this thing charging pretty regularly in order to survive. So if you're someone who's out and about a ton, it's not the phone for you. But on the flip side of that, what I really love is, you know, Android 10, Android 11. We're seeing the basis of Android 12, the new features that we'll get there. Well, Android has introduced the extreme battery saver capability. And I've tested this a number of times because I've had to because this thing runs out of battery quickly. And what I have found is that over a whole evening, it can keep me down to about 4% loss of battery life. So if I got 5%, I can wake up and charge my phone and still have my alarm go off. The other thing about this phone that I've never cared for was solely, and I think it's just a poor implementation of the technology. I don't think that the technology is bad, and I think we're about to have that proven by the second generation Nest Hub, which I'm not allowed to tell you about as I film this, but I will by the time you see it. So that's kind of a funny little component there. Now, solely, honestly, it would just get in the way. I'd stick my phone on Bluetooth, start playing music in the car, and then my hand would go in front of it, or it would just move or shift in the car in the cup holder if that's where I had it, and suddenly I'd be stopped music or playing different music. It was just a frustrating thing, so I actually have turned it off on this device. The other feature I really love is face match or the face unlock feature and I have missed this as I've transitioned to the next product we're going to talk about. Now face match works about 95% of the time I'd say and then there's some other times when it gets a little frustrating and I have to push that power button a couple of times to get the device to kind of realize oh he's holding me and I should unlock because he's also looking at me but it works really well in the dark and I've really appreciated that it kind of lights up your face and then it knows you're there so that has been something excellent and that you know few times it doesn't work eh, I have to put in the passcode before I had the Pixel 4, I had a Pixel 3a, and once I got the Pixel 4a, I actually sent that 3a over to Alan. He's using that, daily carrying it, and I started to use the Pixel 4a. Now, right away, I don't have Active Edge, and I don't have the face unlock. I instead have a fingerprint reader, but everything else feels remarkably close to this highly powered Pixel 4. The fingerprint scanner is great and really the, the camera is just as great and that's not something I talked about here but this camera and the portraits that these things take, the, the hardware isn't there. It's not about the hardware with Google and that's something you, you're always going to have to understand is they take mediocre hardware and they turn it into something great with software and that's what happens with the photos even on the 4a this thing is not the perfect camera but those portrait photos are things that i absolutely end up loving and actually the photos application there this is just a little aside but it's something that i think is really important for families you know we are a digital age and we take these photos and they live online and then they get processed and thrown into some uh, cloud service or maybe onto a hard drive if we're really smart about this or really active at managing this and the thing is that means we don't have hard copies and so google photos you know i went in there the other day and i just started adding photos to a book that they wanted to sell me and I think it came out to like $30 or something for this hard uh, photo book that Google had produced. I had it in a couple of weeks and it looks great and it's mostly from the pictures being taken with these two phones. It still has some battery issues. This is not the biggest battery and in terms of the screen now Ladies, I need you to pay attention here for a second. I have relatively large hands and you know, you make whatever assumptions you wanna make with that. But you know what? If you're kind of like me and you have definitely over average hand size, you're probably gonna find yourself getting a little bit of cramps in your hand. Like this thing, it starts to hurt when I'm sitting there typing on it for a long time. And that's actually the reason that I daily carry the 4XL. It's those big hands. Still, in terms of a budget phone, and that's really what this is, plus the little case that you can get with this, I really love this case. It's really rugged. I've dropped it a few times, and honestly, 
most people are not going to need more than this phone and I think you're kidding yourself if you think you need some $1,200 phone when something like this exists. Somehow in my life I've always had cameras around, whether it's the one I'm shooting with today or whether it's the kind that provide security in your home. So that's allowed me to take a pretty hard look at the Nest cameras and I've had a number of them plus the new one that's in the Nest Hub Max. All of these Nest cameras I've been able to be pretty familiar with the technology and, and take a real hard look at what they're actually like. And so I always look at things initially from that engineering point of view and there's great components in these devices that survive in really cold weather and they also are really ruggedly made and this makes them really strong for outdoor applications even up here in Canada and I think that's a really important piece to any device in terms of longevity and that is exactly what I've found. Now I've had the outdoor cams for a couple of years. I've now had the Nest Cam on this for a year and on top of that I had IQs and I have friends with other of the Nest Indoor and the IQ devices as well. So I've run kind of the gamut on this, ser on this whole series of products and honestly I still haven't heard of one actually physically breaking. I think that's what I'll tell you about the Nest Cams that strikes me the most today. You know what, these were well designed but like five years ago and when they built these cameras they were the best on the market. They're not the best on the market anymore and they're still relatively high priced plus I am really really sure that we are going to see new versions come out on the market this year from Google and I think they will be lower priced so wait I think a little bit on the Nest Cams in general otherwise you know what they're still a great experience if you have the Nest Aware subscription so you have to add that cost and to the the price of any of these Nest Cams that you buy right now otherwise what they are is something you can log into have a quick look at when they see something but uh, you know that's not a lot of use in this day and age. The other component you have a little bit to worry about with the Nest Cams is the fact that the Nest app is going away but the good news is we have seen integration with Amazon's voice assistant come back plus we've seen integration now with Samsung that is not perfect but pretty good and I really like that fact and by the way here with that Nest Hub Max I have that camera into smart things as well so there's lots of positives with the Nest system but we've had a little bit of flux there and it's been a painful time. When I received the Nest Audio I was pretty excited for a few reasons but probably the biggest reason for me was because I was in this special little session with some of the Google engineers and product managers that told me a lot about the product before it kind of came out to you guys and then I was excited about telling you and actually that's just the kind of session I just had for the second generation of the Nest Hub and I'm excited for that again. Then I unboxed it and I could see that, you know, that covering that looked just like the Nest Mini and I was pretty excited again and then I plugged it in and I heard it and I was excited again because honestly Google had come out with something that looked great, could fit in so many places in my home and it just was going to work so much better than my original Google Home, especially in terms of that audio quality. What I want you to hear from me is that this is an audio speaker and it is everything else second. That is the point. It works great in multi-room audio groups and in speaker pairs and really it's not the best control interface. That's what you have the smart displays for and I think this just works a lot better for controlling everything in your life because it gives you that visual component. In terms of audio, it's fantastic. But like I said, the Nest Hub Max is still my favorite speaker and initially when I was reviewing the Nest Audio and I was comparing it to the Amazon Echo, the fourth generation device, you know what, I said they're so close, there's not that much difference. But over time I have found myself preferring the Amazon Echo. It just performs a little bit better, it's a little better rounded and so you know if you're just looking for a music speaker, I still have other preferences. 
The other thing that bothers me with it is with its kind of muted look and feel, I want to use it in more situations, but I just don't feel like I can use it because my living room is filled up with Amazon Echoes that can do the home theater thing that I want the Nest Audios to do. And we've been told by Google this is coming, it'll work with the Chromecast, but so at $100, I'm kind of mixed on the Nest Audio. It's still such an improvement over the Nest Minis, especially in that speaker pair situation, and I really do love how it looks. So I think this one's kind of a personal choice, whether you have a spot, it's gonna fill your home with really great audio, but it's still not that. Now I just mentioned the Google Chromecast and when you're talking about a $50 streamer with the namesake of Chromecast being or getting a better version of Android TV, just a better looking interface, plus you get this little remote and all of that package for that low cost, I mean you're talking about a device that's going to hit the market and go. And with the best voice assistant on the planet on the device, we're looking at a device with a ton of potential. But if that's not Google in a nutshell, then I don't know what is. They have a ton of potential and don't always deliver. And there's a couple of things that have started to frustrate me about the Chromecast. And I think, you know, the first one is we don't have Stadia on there. And this is Google's own gaming service. And I created a hack or a workaround for it. But it's still not there. Plus, I can't pair all of the different headphones and earbuds, and I hear you guys when you say, I can't get this one paired, why can't I do that? Plus, I had to add the external, um, the external storage on there, so there's just been a couple of things that I don't love about the device. It does sound like we're gonna get the family profiles or at least the kid profiles. That should have been there day one. And the home theater thing that I talked about before, that's still bugging me too, but you know what? You gotta take a step back here. It's a $50 streamer. This is the first time Google put out this OS or this new interface and they did a remarkable job. It is still 100% my favorite streaming device. The one I use the most actually, it is so snappy, it's responsive and all of the custom things that I was able to do because it is basically Android TV makes it fantastic. The remote has become a little bit of an issue and I think a lot of you saw this coming. I saw it coming too because within a few days I was starting to get some missed clicks on the, the four buttons at the top or the radial control at the top and yeah sometimes I press down and it goes left on me and you know what I can live with that plus I can now buy a new remote if I need it. So overall, I'm going to tell you 100%, go get one of those. It's worth the wait for the home theater options and it's worth the wait for things like Stadia. And actually, when you follow our video, it's already fantastic. So go try it out, get one of those. If there's anything you buy today, that's the one. Whenever you talk about Wi-Fi solutions or mesh, mesh Wi-Fi in general, you get a bunch of people who kind of flood in and say, I can't get anything to connect to my Wi-Fi, they're in complete dire straits, or they love whatever they have today. And I think the tact that was taken by Google as they worked on Nest Wi-Fi was kind of to just split the difference, head right down the middle and make you not think about Wi-Fi. And that has been my favorite thing. Cause listen guys, I'm not here to spend days and days and days tweaking setup or settings or changing the configuration. I don't wanna do any of that. And so I have employed Nest Wi-Fi now for about a year, very, very successfully. And whenever I talk to somebody who's had problems with this system, and I've done a number of these installs at this point, what I invariably find is that they have a neighbor that has created some kind of crazy interference for them, or their own home has created interference or opportunities for interference. Or the second problem they have is the more likely one. And that is that they want to play. And if you want to play with your Wi-Fi system and constantly change settings and constantly adjust things, well, you go right ahead and get something else. But if you leave Nest Wi-Fi, it will figure it out. And this is one of the key pieces with this system. Don't touch it, it learns. And that's even in the settings and in the, 
the privacy settings for the device, they say, we learn, we analyze, and they do. It gets more and more solid as you leave it alone. Now, that doesn't mean you can't add new devices because I am constantly bringing stuff on and off and I have tons. You guys know how many different devices I have on Wi-Fi. So this has been rock solid. I've added a new Nest Wi-Fi point, access point, And in terms of Wi-Fi, it's been the best solution I've ever had. Now, that's not to say that this is a perfect system. It doesn't have Wi-Fi 6. I happen to think that that's not that important since I still don't have a Wi-Fi 6 device on the desk here, but maybe you have one single iPhone 12 that you would really like to have Wi-Fi 6 versus everything else in your home. That is your prerogative. The other thing is it's not top end speed. And I even mean that on the Wi-Fi 5 side of things. And to kind of deal with that, I actually went in somebody's house here very recently and I did the two router installation. That really helps and it works just as well. The biggest drawback though is actually the access points with the Google Assistant. They are not responsive. They don't seem to hear very well. I don't enjoy them as little Nest Minis. I actually rather have these. And so they often sit around my house with the microphone switch turned off. When I got the new Nest thermostat, this is the third generation, not the brand new kind of lower end version. You know what? I couldn't install it here. This is a rental place and they weren't going to let me adjust that. So I actually went and installed it at a friend's. I see them all the time and actually I'm kind of their support person. I got to stop that. Now they had a first generation Nest thermostat and we pulled that out, put this in and made the installation incredibly easy, obviously. But from there, the device has done remarkably well. They have had a couple of issues with it, but it's also diagnosed an issue with their HVAC system, told them about it and they fixed it. So that's an incredible new feature that has come to those thermostats. Now, because they had a device for so long, they have saved a ton of money versus just a traditional thermostat. It does the sensing very well. They have a Nest Protect in their home, which, you know what, that just a really quick rapid fire on that device. Fantastic. Not much use from a home automation standpoint, except with your thermostats. And you know what? It becomes a secondary sensor to know whether you're at home or not. And then they can kind of turn down the thermostat. And that's one of the biggest benefits of that system. I do love the fact that now you can bring that into Samsung Smart Things. I think that's a really important integration and I'm looking forward to other integrations that Google will continue to do like they just did with Brilliant. But overall, the Nest thermostat is still a great device and I still think that larger one has a lot of reasons or the more expensive one has a lot of reasons in the market versus the new thermostat from 2020. Now, some of these products I've had for longer than six months. And if you look back in the history of the channel, it goes Google Home Original, Google Home Mini, and then Lenovo Smart Display. And that, I had the 8-inch version, I had the 10-inch version, I actually got two 10-inch versions. Lenovo really took care of me at that point, and so it's going to be a little bit harsh to tell you what I think about them today, but it's important to compare it kind of versus the Nest Hub, or at least the first generation of the Nest Hub. The speakers on the Lenovo Smart Displays have always been better than the original Google Nest Hub. That is just a fact, you're gonna find that, and I love that, that's actually one of my favorite speakers still that I play very often. But what's happened is kind of what I talked about when we did comparison reviews versus the Nest Hub Max versus the Echo Shows. It's just come to pass. The fact is the processing power is too low on that device. And I noticed it early on and I started to kind of throw things out there like, you guys might not want to buy those. I'm not in love with what I'm seeing. And it just cannot handle the new interface. And this is so evident at this point, it's almost stopping me from using the device. Now, what happens today? By the way, Google, I have turned off my family bell feature and it is still running, but when it happens, I tap on the screen once and it keeps talking and I tap the second time and it keeps talking and the third time usually gets it to stop telling me that the family bell that I don't want turned on 
is going off. Now, that's frustrating for a number of reasons, but the real problem here is that it's taking multiple taps in every case to get something to register on the Lenovo Smart Display. Plus, this is all circling around the fact that the processor can't keep up with the new interface. So it's very sluggish and I'm not enjoying the interface portion of that device at all anymore. And in contrast to the Nest Hub, well, you know what? That device is still pretty quick. It is not the Nest Hub Max, but it's still managing to handle all of the smart display goodness that we get now from the Google Assistant. The Google Nest Mini, you know what? It is still a great improvement over the Google Home Mini. But if you wanna know the results or how I feel about that one, you've gotta watch the video that's up on screen, which was our first six months later. And that is the first product we talk about there. So go head over to that, see a ton of smart home products that you probably never heard about as well. Otherwise, thanks for watching today. And of course, don't hate, automate.